Video number four is about normalization, warping our brain image volumes so all the brains are the same template shape and we can compare them directly, preferably voxel by voxel. Sometimes if you've just got data from one participant and you want to look at the data, then you just realign, smooth and do the statistics straight on there. Also in the bad old days when sometimes the normalization didn't work out very well, you would always do statistics on data as close to the original brain shape as possible just to make sure it worked okay but nowadays normalization always works fine fingers crossed so we can trust it to warp our brains beautifully let's try some normalization the next step is to normalize the images that means changing their shapes so they match a template or normal image and um, this is going to involve quite a clever three-dimensional warping um, the realignment we did was very simple six parameter rigid body the image didn't change shape at all it just moved about and rotated to warp an image to match a template it's got to be able to distort in three dimensions in a non-linear way let's see how that works so if we go to the image pre-processing panel uh, normalize has three options normalize estimate normalize right and then normalize estimate and write together as you might imagine normalize estimate just works out the warping parameters to change one image to match another one um, and the writing is when it creates a new image that is warped and we're going to use the third option which is to do both together so let's do normalize estimate and write this brings up the batch editor um, you should be familiar with the layout now. Um, here we see lots of um, options and defaults to do with the normalization process, um, which are quite complex, but we should be able to, 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 to leave them. First, what we have to put in are the uh, images we want to warp. The option you have here is new subject or, or participant. So let's just put one of those in. And under this subject or participant heading, it says image to align images to write. So um, the image to uh, align is, well, if we just check the option, it tells us the image that the template or atlas data is warped into alignment with. The result is a set of warps which can be applied to this image or any other image that's lined up with it, registered with it. So all our functional images are all now lined up so we should be able to use any one of them but we'll typically just use that first one so we'll do this for participant number 10 first and we'll select that first functional image and then images to write well that's the whole functional sequence so let's specify that for participant 10 functional sequence just right click select all that puts in all 113 Uh, then we have some estimation options, but we're going to leave them as they are. Um, it's usually only when you're doing things with structural images that things problems can occur. Hopefully, with these EPI images, everything should work straight off out of the box. But we don't just want to do um, one participant. We need to do all five. So let's quickly put all those in. And in each case, we just are putting too many, haven't I? And I've just deleted the wrong one. Okay, these things happen. I'm very quickly going to put all of these in. Now I've just specified the files for all uh, five of the participants. So you can see the first one is participant 10, then participants 11, 12, 13, 14. In each case, the image to align is the first in the sequence. Um, if you've realigned and re-sliced images, often you'll produce a mean image, which is slightly higher quality because it's got reduced noise, but we haven't done that, so we don't use that. We've got the first in the sequence, and then the images to write are all 113 for each of the five participants. And for the moment, we're going to leave all the options as they are, but do note when it writes a new set of images, the voxel size is going to change. By default, 
it writes to a, a two millimeter cubic voxel, whereas our input images are three millimeter. So our images are going to appear to be more detailed than they actually are. They'll be interpolated to a higher resolution. Then all you do is, if you wish, you can uh, you can save that patch. We are going to put some of those together later. And then just set it going to run. And as it runs, it, it gives us some information about what it's doing. Let's just watch the first one come up and we'll be able to see what process is occurring because normalization is actually quite a uh, complicated procedure. If you want to know how it works, then look in uh, the second uh, human brain mapping book. Once the normalization process has completed for all the participants, you should check that it's done it correctly. So if we look at participant 10, uh, the first one, we go into the functional directory, we've still got the functional images, which remember were realigned. Um, we now see there's an additional set of images which are prefixed with, prefixed with a W, which means warped. The images have been warped to match a template. And at the very bottom, there's an additional image which says Y underscore. It says it's a nifty image and it's uh, of a large size. So what we should do is have a look at one of those images. If we look at one of those warped images, that's the EPI image warped into a uh, normalized space. We can tell that that's changed if we use the check uh, reg function for check register, which you use to see if images are lined up. So we click on check register and we select, um, well, the uh, original first image in the sequence, then the warped first image in the sequence, and then, for example, I go to the uh, SPM directory, go to the canonical images and the single subject T1. We're now seeing three different image volumes. The first is the um, EPI image, the fir first functional image from our sequence. Um, the second is that same image warped to match the template. So if you see, as I click about in one image, it can't, doesn't come to a corresponding location in the warped image. But if we click about in the warped image, we should see that it comes to approximately the right place in this structural image, which happens to be uh, in uh, template MNI space. So we can see the normalization seems to have worked OK. Next thing to do is start rearranging our images because there are, um, we've now got some uh, warped ones. I'll, I'll use the terminal here to do it on a Mac. You can use a command line, uh, bring up a command in Windows if you want to do it in Windows. Or, or you can do it just by selecting and, and, and moving. Um, so here, uh, I'll just make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah, if I Uh, okay, so all I've got to do is for I've got to move the files for partis in the participant 010 folder, and then in F, and then the ones that start W and end in dot NII, and move them to P010 slash um, WRF slash, and then just do the same for the others as well. just four or five of them make sure we, we put those in the sensible place so it's, it's easy to locate them and we can just select all images of the same type easily so we've now got that for all uh, five of the participants so if we look say in participant 14 now in the warped we have the warped ones and if we look back in uh, the functional we've still got this these realignment parameters when we realign them and this y um, it's it's an image but it describes the warping parameters you could even display it if you wanted to um, uh, the y image 
and it ends up looking a bit weird because of uh, the scale it's on. Um, but that describes how to warp from that uh, original functional image space to the normalized space. So you could then uh, apply that to another image. If we'd just done normalized estimate only, it would have simply produced this uh, warping um, parameter matrix volume rather than reslicing the images in addition. Okay, so that was normalization. You don't need to worry too much about how it works or what the parameters are, just check that your images look beautiful.